essentially if if uh, Julius uh, Jankowski, who is in, uh, maybe mispronouncing his last name, uh, thank gosh. Close enough. I'm not going to have to deal with that yeah. uh, so much in the future. But um, uh, he, had he uh, sat uh, atop a, an FCC that had changed that classification, it basically would have made that Verizon suit moot, right? I mean, they wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, yes. And so when the, what happened under Janikowski was that he created, he created an open Internet order. Uh, it was passed at the end of 2010, um, and he said that this protected net neutrality, but in fact it's, it's riddled with loopholes. It doesn't really protect net neutrality over wireless Internet connections. And so, it, it, so his order is somewhat flimsy. The FCC order that Janikowski put in place is somewhat flimsy, and it, and it rests on this notion that the FCC can do this under Title I. Uh, and that's the that's what Verizon is challenging in the courts right now. And so we we'll, this 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 won't go this won't be heard until the summer. The earliest we'll probably get a decision is in the fall. But at that time, if they decide to take away the, even this flimsy protection, we'll be in a sort of wild west scenario where ISPs like AT and T and Verizon and Comcast can basically do whatever they want. They can they can block certain services that they don't like. They can really take control of, of your Internet experience away from Internet users without any legal recourse. So we'll be in this period where we're, we're going to have to do a lot of organizing. Free Press does a lot of this. We've, we've run a coalition called SaveTheInternet.com and working with a number of other groups that just to make sure that the, that the public is aware that there's a problem there and have them speak up to their members of Congress and, and uh, contact the SEC to give the new chair – uh, the political momentum to do the right thing. All right, now, now, I, now I appreciate that you, you know, you come from an advocacy group, and so the, the, I don't want to put you in a uh, position where you're going to hamper your ability to continue to advocate effectively. But was Julius Jenenkowski was he one of the single most disappointing figures uh, in in the Bush? I mean, the Bush. Excuse me. Uh, in the Obama administration, I mean, this guy seems to have ca- came in with so much, um, with with so much promise. There was so much that uh, people anticipated this guy would be so good uh, in the FCC, and he seemed at every turn to be very, very weak need and um, uh, and and really just a weak leader. He did not push for the things that everybody anticipated he would. Julius Janikowski was a major, major disappointment. Uh, Julius Janikowski wrote in on the coattails of Obama's 2008 election. Obama, at that time, when he was when he was candidate Obama before becoming President Obama, said that net neutrality that he take, he take, this is his quote he takes a back seat to no one in his support of net neutrality, and, and he made it the, his number one telecommunications policy issue. Uh, Julius Janikowski was an advisor at the time. Uh, for for candidate Obama, so every expectation when he came into office is that he would put in place a uh, strong ruling to protect the open internet. But uh, he, I think he he um, he didn't prove himself to be a very strong leader at the FCC, and I think uh, was in, intimidated by a very powerful corporate lobby in the AT&T and Comcast, and uh, there were even people within the White House we understand who. We're listening to uh, to the corporate lobby who 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 pressured him and, and he buckled. I mean, we you know we we as an organization that uh, organizes people and advocates on this issue, we we put two million comments into the FCC. That's unheard of. Mm. Rarely does the FCC in a public proceeding get that many comments from the public. Two million comments that said we need strong net neutrality rules and we need them now. So he certainly had the backing of the public. To do something, do the right thing, and and he buckled. Um, we had one day, you know, we set up outside the FCC, and we were, we gave free waffle breakfasts to all of the FCC staff who walked through the front door there, with a sign that says, you know, dear Julius, don't waffle on net neutrality. But he but he did. He did waffle. All right, uh, and and lastly. I uh, just got a couple of minutes here. What is, uh, aside from the outcome of this uh, Verizon suit, and in the event that Verizon loses, then classification one becomes enough, although, uh, like you mentioned, 
the the compromise that was struck there still allows for uh, ultimately um, uh, infringement in terms of uh, if services are delivered wirelessly. But um, but what else is uh, really crucial that the FCC is going to be dealing with in the uh, coming months? That um, in the event yeah. that uh, Tom Wheeler gets um, uh, approved, will be uh, something that we should be watching for. There are a lot of important issues that that will cross his desk. One of which is the, is the reallocation of spectrum. I don't know if you remember, a couple of years back, we did a transition from analog television broadcasting to digital broadcasting. And when that transition happened, it freed up a lot of the public airwaves for other uses. And the FCC is now trying to decide how we should use all these new airwaves. Well, a lot of these airwaves are perfect for making Wi-Fi networks more ubiquitous. And so uh, we're, pressur- we're pressuring the FCC to release those airways on an unlicensed basis so you could have a Wi-Fi networks that, don't just, that aren't just limited to the, the corner coffee shop, but actually can envelop whole cities and give users an alternative to getting online. You can, you can use your smartphone and connect to Wi-Fi networks almost anywhere that you go. That's really important. There's another issue that's really so, important. So now, wait a second. That, now, that one is the uh, Mothra Godzilla thing, right? Because like, if someone like Google, they want something like that, right? Because uh, yes. uh, they want to be able to have their services um, th- delivered as easily as possible uh, to the end user. It's kind of interesting because um, I, even the big carriers like Wi-Fi. I don't know, you know, anybody who has an iPhone on an AT&T network knows that it doesn't always work. Uh-huh. Um, because AT&T oversold the iPhone and uh, their network can't handle the load. So what a lot of people do with smartphones is they, they do what's called offloading, that whenever they can find a Wi-Fi network, they connect to it and they do a lot of their, they do a lot of their data, you know, uh, data work, or they share a lot of information and use it on a Wi-Fi network and not on the AT&T network. So in, in a strange way, the, the, the carriers, AT&T and Verizon and, and T-Mobile and Metro PCS and some of the Sprint and some of the others, they like having Wi-Fi available because it means that they don't have to carry so much of the data load. Mm-hmm. So, so I think it's a good idea all around. I mean, they, there is a, there's still some debate about, uh, about how the spectrum should be used, but I think you know, people genuine, genuinely think Wi-Fi is a good idea. Okay. And uh, one other uh, big issue? Big issue is around is an issue around broadcast ownership. Uh, there's ongoing consolidation. Sinclair Broadcast Group, for example, a very conservative uh, broadcast company based in Maryland, is buying up a lot of television stations. The FCC has caps that prohibit too much ownership of, of local televisions and radio stations by one company. They also have they're also looking at a rule of whether whether a local newspaper and local television station can be owned by the same company, um, the FCC is trying to lift those rules that would allow a Rupert Murdoch or a Sinclair Broadcast Group to be basically basically own the major news outlets in a single town. We're fighting to stop the loosening of those regulations. Indeed. All right. Well, um, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Carr, the Senior Director of Strategy for FreePress.org, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And, um uh, we'll be watching. Uh, this uh, Verizon ruling is going to be really important, and we'll uh, hopefully uh, get a sense of who Tom Wheeler is, uh, maybe in his confirmation hearings, maybe uh, more importantly afterwards. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Tim. You're welcome, Sam.